For those of you who don't know me, um, I'm Walt Zaremba, and for the last 20 years or so, I've had the distinct privilege of representing the York County citizens on the York County Board of Supervisors. I grew up in New Jersey in a town called Kearney, which is one of the towns in Hudson County. My first uh, 10 years of uh, K through 12 were spent at Kearney High School in Kearney. Uh, my parents bought their first home and we moved to the shore, the Jersey Shore, and wound up graduating from a small high school called Keyport High School. I had a great upbringing in this blue collar family, but about halfway through my senior year of high school, I woke up and said to myself, what am I gonna do after high school? Nobody in my family had gone to college. I didn't have a lot of direction from myself in terms of what lied ahead. So I went down and I wound up talking to the, uh, the different recruiters for the armed services, and I joined the Army right out of high school. I was assigned to an engineer battalion up on the DMZ in Korea. Uh, and one day I got a call from the, uh, the senior enlisted gentleman of the battalion, in those days called the Command Sergeant Major, and he sat down with me and he said, Zremba, we think you might, emphasis on might, make a decent officer. If you can take some tests and uh, pass a board of officers, the Army will send you to officer candidate school. In those days you needed at least two years of college to go to OCS, and I had been going to school at night through the University of Maryland uh, in Korea. Long story short, I passed that board, uh, I found myself at Fort Sill, Oklahoma for six months, and that started a 30-year career during which I ultimately uh, received my baccalaureate degree. The Army sent me to Kansas University for my master's degree. The GI Bill paid for my law degree. And along the way, I fell in love, got married, I had two children. Uh, currently, uh, I have five grandchildren, two children and a, a stepson. Uh, and. Uh, Two combat tours to Vietnam, 30 years later, I retired in 1992, had gone to law school for the specific purpose of trying to answer the question, what are you gonna do when, you, uh, when they run you off? Well, for the last 22 years, I've had a law practice, a uh, boutique law firm in uh, Upper County. We do nothing but uh, state planning and elder law, a total of seven individuals that I'm responsible for the payroll for. Uh, well, I've had this distinct pleasure of being on the Board of Supervisors for 20 years. Just got re-elected in November, and with the good Lord willing, I'll have a total of 24 years on the Board, serving people of uh, York County, specifically the 1st District. Um, I finished up in the military in 1992 uh, and began uh, the practice of law here in uh, Virginia about a year after that. Well, along the way, I befriended a gentleman who lived in Queens Lake by the name of Bob Walker. Bob was a retired Air Force pilot, wonderful friend of mine. Uh, he's, he's deceased now, but he began to talk to me about um, running for office, York County Board of Supervisors. And I said, Bob, I don't know a thing about local government. And why would you want me to run or anybody else to run for the Board of Supervisors? Bob said, because the upper county in particular doesn't have a voice. There's no advocacy. We're, the, we're the, the stepchildren of the county. We don't get the programs and services that the rest of the county gets. And by George, we need to have a strong voice with respect to uh, District 1. Uh, after taking so much of his cajoling, I in fact announced my candidacy in 1995. Uh, the election of uh, November 1995 uh, ran against three other people. I ran as a Republican, uh, there was a Democrat and two independents, and much to my surprise, I won that election. During the 20 years that I've had the privilege to represent the citizens of York County, specifically District 1, I sat on a myriad of, of, of boards, uh, chairing some of those boards along the way. The several boards that I, I particularly were, was very happy to be on, and in fact, I still am on those boards, one happens to be the uh, Williamsburg Area Destination Marketing Committee, otherwise known as the $2 Committee. The General Assembly uh, passed a bill several years ago, the governor signed, that resulted in, in an additional $2 surcharge for everybody who comes and visits the historic triangle that generates about $3 million a year to be used for marketing tours into the historic triangle. 
I've been on that board now for uh, about 10 years, almost 10 years, shared it a number of times, and I have to be the incumbent chair as we speak. I also represent the county on the uh, Greater Williamsburg Chamber of Commerce Tourism Alliance. It's a long title for the chamber. Uh, in that capacity, um, uh, it, it's a typical chamber of commerce that represents both the, the business community and the tourism community. And a, th th those two committees have come a long way in bringing your county into the fold with respect to what we now call the historic triangle. When I first came on the board about uh, 20 or so years ago, quite frankly, James City County was off by itself, the city of Williamsburg was off by itself, and York County was off by itself with respect to doing their own thing. So one of my, pr my proudest involvements, along with the other board members, was to bring York County into a, a relationship with these two other municipalities whereby today we're working together uh, under the banner of the historic triangle, getting a heck of a lot more out of the dollars that we invest with respect to encouraging tourism to come into the county and by any stretch of the imagination, the tourism dollars uh, in New York County, the city of Williamsburg and James City County have been substantial, allowing us to provide the, not just the tourism marketing, but the programs and services that our citizens enjoy to this day. When I first came on board, we had some 650 acres up here in the upper county called New Quarter Park that was closed to the public. And I always wondered why don't we utilize the 650 acres for a, a park? It, it had the, the incredible capability. So along the years, I was able to convince my fellow board members and the staff that we ought to open up New Quarter Park. And if you've been to New Quarter Park, and if you haven't, you gotta get there. Today, it's 650 beautiful acres involving walking and jogging paths, mountain bike trails, kayaking, picnic areas, softball field, volleyball field. It's just a wonderful uh, achievement. If you ever visit the, the village of Yorktown, specifically down at Water Street before Hurricane Isabel, about a decade or so ago, you know the only thing worth going down to Yorktown at the time was a wonderful restaurant called Nick's Seafood Pavilion. It was iconic. People from all over wound up going, going down to, to Yorktown for the pleasure of just eating in that restaurant. That's all there was. Isabel came along, basically knocked that restaurant down, and today what we have, is what we call is the Yorktown Riverfront, a marvelous area down there, replete with great restaurants, uh, shops uh, for the locals and tourists to visit, a, just an incredibly wonderful looking facility down there that you would never recognize it from what it was before uh, Hurricane Isabel. It's not all a bed of roses uh, with respect to the county. We have a wonderful place to live, you know, with respect to our schools and our, our public safety, our ambiance of the county, our parks and recreations. We have an incredibly low tax rate, one of the lowest tax rates in, in uh, Tidewater. Uh, but the challenges looming up ahead involve uh, several things. First of all, as you all know, we have already lost uh, Western Refinery. And that refinery, uh, when it was here, uh, resulted in about a $2 million tax revenue to the county, part of our general fund. Uh, alongside the refinery down in Yorktown, of course, is Dominion Resources, uh, Dominion Power. And uh, they are on a glide path when that, that facility will be shut down over the next couple of years. Loss to the county, another two plus million dollars worth of revenue. And of course, the question will become, well, how do you, how do you make up that shortfall? How do you try to uh, keep the tax rate, which is currently 75 and three quarters cents per $100 worth of assessed value, how do we keep it? How do we keep it from the need to add more of a burden to the citizens, uh, the tax paying citizens of the county? So we are looking to expand our commercial base to offset that. Now whether we're successful or not remains to be seen. to share certain uh, issues with you. 
I hope this has been beneficial to you with respect to uh, letting you know who I am and let, letting you know uh, the things I consider important for not just your county, but the Putin District, District 1. And you can contact me any of the, the number of ways that you can contact me. You'll see all that information on the screen, and I look forward to uh, the uh, dialogue with you. Thanks.